You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. I had some problem getting up on the satellite this evening, ladies and gentlemen, so I hope you'll forgive our one-minute lateness signing on the air. The food storage sale will expire Monday. All checks or money orders should be sent in to us postmarked no later than Monday, September the 19th. All orders for the food storage sale must be postmarked low, no later than September the 19th. That's the last day anything received that's postmarked after the 19th will be returned to you. The family unit, one-year supply for a family of four adults, retails for $2,768.00. If your order is postmarked no later than Monday, September the 19th, you can have it for $1,484. The security unit, two-year supply for one adult or one-year supply for two adults, retail $1,413. As long as your order is postmarked no later than Monday, September the 19th, you can have it for $807. The modular unit, which is one-year supply, for one adult, or six months supply for two adults, retails for $1,088. As long as your order is postmarked no later than Monday, September the 19th, you can have it for $644. $644. Again, the family unit, $1,484. The security unit, $807. The modular unit, $644. Don't write to us and ask us to send you material on these uh, sale items, folks, because if we did that and we did all the printing and we sent you all that stuff, we wouldn't be able to offer these things at anywhere, even approaching in your wildest dreams, these prices. So take advantage of them while you can. The sale expires with a postmark on Monday, September the 19th for the food storage items. Make all checks or money orders out to Annie, A-N-N-I-E. If you have gold or silver coin, we'd rather have that. Uh, we also have some other things on sale until further notice. My book, Behold a Pale Horse, for members is $20 postpaid. Non-members, $25 postpaid. That's uh, the book, Behold a Pale Horse, $20 for members, postpaid, non-members, $25 postpaid. That's a $5 saving on the book. The Trees and Papers, over 620-some-odd pages of absolute proof, documentation, treaties, pages from the Federal Register and the Congressional Record, State Department documents, United States Code, the treason documents, over 620 some odd pages of absolute proof of the treason that has occurred in this country and the fact that they're bringing about a one world government. It's not hidden. It's not really a conspiracy. It's all out in the open. Most Americans are too lazy and too stupid to even bother looking. So we did it all for you. They demand the proof. And now that we've made it available, only a very few even want to look at it. I hope you think you're one of the few. They're on sale now. Treason documents for members, $60. Non-members, $70. If you don't like the price, go to Cuba. Everything's free. The treason papers for members, $60. Non-members, $70. That's uh, about a $15 savings. 
Audio tapes of the hour of the time for members are $6. Non-members, $8. Audio tapes of the hour of the time for members, $6. Non-members, $8. The series that we did on Mystery Babylon, 41 broadcast hours on this specific subject of the secret societies bringing about the New World Order. We call it the Mystery Babylon series or the Mystery series. For members within the continental United States, $180. For members in foreign countries outside the United States, $210. And that includes 41 broadcast hours plus the Luxor video. For members, $180 inside the continental United States. In foreign countries, $210. For non-members inside the continental United States, $210. Outside the continental United States, $240. We're only up in the postage by $30 for you folks. Annie sent out a package today. Where'd you send that to, Annie? She sent it to Luxembourg. It costs $43 for postage. So you're getting a deal on all of these things, folks. Take advantage of it. We can't do it very long. Remember, the food storage sale expires with a postmark Monday, September the 19th. Any orders received after that will be returned. We cannot afford to sell this stuff at those prices. We did it hoping that many people would take advantage of it in a short period of time so that you won't get caught with your pants down when the you-know-what hits the thing that goes around. And... Uh, some of you did, and that's very good. The rest of you, I don't know what you're going to do, unless you get your orders in by that time. And I hope you don't fit in to this category. Don't go away, folks, because uh, I'm going to talk about some pretty important things tonight. Well, I don't know what's going on here. This thing's not working. Okay, here we go. Now I know what's going on. Listen to this. See if you fit into this category. If you do, you better get out of it real quick. You are Consider the two wrongs never make a right, but the three, two, wherever possible, put people on hold. Be comforted that in the face of all aridity, and despite the changing portions of time, there is always a big future in computer maintenance. Especially with those persons closest to you. That lemon on your left, for instance. 
Be assured that a walk through the ocean of most souls would scarcely get your feet wet. Fall not in love, therefore. It will stick to your face. Gracefully surrender the things of youth, the birds, the sea air, the sooner, Taiwan. And let not the sands of time get in your life. Hire people with hooks. For a good time, call 606 4311. Ask for candy. Take part amid the deepening gloom because your dog is finally getting enough cheese. And reflect that whatever misfortune may be your life, it could only be worse in your walk. You are a ghost of the universe. You have no right to be here. And whether you can hear it or not, the universe is lacking behind your back. Therefore, make peace with your God. Whatever you can achieve him to be. The hairy thunderer or cosmic muffin. With all its hopes, dreams, promises, and urban renewal, the world continues to deteriorate. Give up. Recently in Los Angeles, Lieutenant Colonel James Bogrites, we call him Bobo Gritz on this program, gave a lecture at which we had about five members of the intelligence service attending. During the lecture, Bobo Gritz made this statement, and I quote, I have been an FBI informant since the age of 18, end quote. Now, at some future date, maybe in about a week or two, because I have to go to Phoenix next week, we'll have those people who heard him make that statement on this broadcast. There was an audio tape and videotape made of the lecture, and uh, a lot of people gave money to purchase those tapes. Nobody has received a tape yet, and because that statement was made during that meeting, I'll venture to say that nobody will ever see those tapes. In our investigations into Jack McClam, we've also made the following discovery. Knowing that Bogreitz is a 32nd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, and that the two are bosom buddies, We knew that there had to be some connection. Jack McClam is a member of the Fraternal Order of Police, which is the police arm of Freemasonry. I'm going to read you an article that we're going to talk about tonight. In fact, two articles. One concerning the Fraternal Order of Police, and the other, the other, you will be amazed at. This is from the Rock Hill, South Carolina Herald. The Rock Hill, South Carolina Herald. Code of silence among Rock Hill cops. Testimony. Supervisor ignored a report about drunken officers by Jeffrey Wilcox, Herald staff writer. A code of silence among Rock Hill police officers was so strong that a shift supervisor in May turned his back on a report that three drunk off-duty officers had assaulted a man in the city according to testimony Monday. During a fired officer's appeal hearing Monday, Officer Michael Peake testified that he saw three fellow officers accost a man on Green Street, search him for drugs, badger him, and then threaten to plant drugs on him. Now, folks, as an aside, this is nothing unusual. This occurs daily throughout the nation. 
I continue. Peek said that immediately after the May 27th incident, he tried to report it to his shift supervisor that night, Sergeant Rimbert Scoggins. Scoggins did not want to know and did not want to hear about the incident, Peek testified during the hearing at City Hall. The grievance hearing for former officer Kenneth Durant ended with hours of testimony from police officers, several of whom were questioned about a code of silence in the department. Durant was one of three officers fired on June 24th by Police Chief Larry Nowery after a department investigation into allegations that he and officers Craig Shirey and David Weaver had fired guns outside the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge downtown, accosted several citizens, and drove a car after drinking that night. A Winthrop University police officer also was involved in the incident. Scott Moore was stripped of his badge and gun and reassigned by the school after a state law enforcement division investigation determined that the officers committed no high court offenses. Can you believe this, folks? Some people picked a fight with me in a restaurant. All I did was argue with them for a short period of time and go to my room, and my whole family was gassed in our hotel room. And their investigation determined that these officers committed no offenses. None of the officers faces criminal charges for the shootings or the reported assault of Carlos Minton that night on Green Street. Durant's appeal is yet to be decided. A city panel will report its findings to city manager Russell Allen, who will then decide whether Durant should get his job back. Testimony Monday and Friday revealed that the unwritten code of silence among the officers may have kept the incidents covered up for several weeks. Weaver, who began the grievance hearing Friday, along with Durant, did not show up for Monday's proceedings. Durant said Weaver called him early Monday and told him he would withdraw from the grievance hearing. On Friday, other officers testified that they had seen Shirey and Weaver shooting guns in the air outside the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge, but didn't report it. They also said that officers drink often at the lodge, which dispenses beer from a soft drink machine. On Monday, Officer Anthony LaChica testified that he was at the lodge on May 27th, but left around 1.30 a.m. after drinking four or five beers. LaChica said Shirey told him a few days later that the three former Rock Hill officers and Winthrop University police officer Scott Moore went, quote, creeping, end quote, in the Green Street area. That means an on- or off-duty search for criminal activity, La Chica said. Grievance panel co-chairwoman Flo Anderson questioned La Chica about his knowledge of a code of silence among city officers. As an aside, folks, it's the same code of silence that exists in every fraternal lodge in this nation. They take an oath of silence and an oath of loyalty to their fellow brothers. They cannot talk without violating their oaths, and many of these oaths are blood-curdling where the candidate actually agrees to his own murder should he betray the secret. La Chica said he understood the term to mean that officers don't tattletale on other officers. Peek's testimony, which also included questions about the code of silence, was most damaging to Weaver and Shirey. Peek testified that he was on routine patrol on Green Street when he encountered Durant, Weaver, and Moore standing over Minton, who was sitting on the ground. Shirey joined the men, and all four officers acted loud and boisterous, Peek said. They all appeared to be intoxicated, Peek said. Peek testified that Shirey told him the men were riding around in the area and jumping out on people. Shirey asked Peek to check for any outstanding warrants on Minton while Durant disappeared around the back of his car. While Durant was gone, Shirey grabbed Peek's flashlight and began shining it down Minton's pants and into his mouth as Weaver and Moore verbally badgered Minton to make him reveal where he was keeping crack cocaine. Peek, said Weaver, then made a remark about planting some crack on Minton while Shirey began digging his hand into his pocket and pulled it out as if to hold something. After Peek's statements, Captain Charles Cabinus testified that he learned of the incident from Lieutenant Leonard Lash LaRue, on June 14th, LaRue, the shift supervisor for the fired officers, apparently had just heard of the May incidents. He was not working the night they reportedly occurred. Mallory and Durant each gave closing statements before the committee retired to begin its deliberations. 
There is nothing that has been presented that would make me alter one bit my decision that Officer Durant be terminated, Nowry said. They think they are police officers when they act like juvenile hooligans. Durant said he was guilty of poor judgment for the entire incident, but admitted he was only guilty of urinating in the bushes of a Green Street home that night. I've worked hard for my career. This is the first time I've been disciplined for anything, he said. After the hearing, Nowry said other officers also have been disciplined for their roles in the incident. Nowry refused to identify the names or number of officers who were disciplined or their punishments, but said the incident redefined the roles of officers in the department. It clarified the responsibility of on-duty personnel. It established a procedure for supervisors, Nowry said. Don't you think it's funny, folks? He refused to identify the names or numbers of officers who were disciplined or their punishments. Don't you think it's strange that public service police officers meet secretly in a lodge and take oaths and have a code of silence? Well, we finally found the link. Finally. I knew we would if we kept looking. And for any of you who doubt it, Jack McLam has listed his membership in the Fraternal Order of Police in many of his own publications. That's where we should have looked in the first place. We didn't think that he would be so naive as to think we were so stupid not to understand what the Fraternal Order of Police really is. But there you have it. And I was correct when I reported that wearing a police officer's uniform when you are not and active duty police officers against the law. The charges were not dropped against Officer Jack McGlam. Just part of them. The part about wearing the uniform is still there. According to the newspaper articles that I have from Phoenix. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand secrecy is not conducive to a free society, nor can it be allowed by a free people. It especially cannot be allowed that our police meet in secret and have oaths of silence. If we wish to remain free, we cannot have Masonic lodges and orders of the Rose Cross, the Palladian Rites. We cannot have the Knights of Pythias or the Sovereign and Military Order, the Knights of Malta or the St. John of Jerusalem or any of these, the B'nai B'rith, none of them should ever be allowed to exist where free people live. For they have always been throughout the history of the world the seed bed for revolution and for destruction of the nations and societies in which they spring up. This is not conjecture and I can prove every single word that I have uttered tonight. In fact, it's the easiest thing in the world to prove. The difficult thing is to prove that it's not true. <laughs> and that cannot be done in light of the evidence. Not at all. In my book, which I published five years ago, I told you in that book, and I told you in lectures years before that, that there was a plan to bring about the destruction of the United States of America, that drugs would be brought into the country and let loose upon an unsuspecting public, that those addicted would become euphemistic slaves, and that they could control the crime rate simply by elevating the price of the drugs and decreasing the supply.
or they could lower the crime rate by decreasing the price and making the drugs more available. I said that ex-mental patients on the drug Prozac would be loosed upon schoolyards and shopping centers with automatic weapons and would kill children and innocent people in an effort to inflame the gun lobby. All of that has come to pass, just exactly as I said that it would. I was the only one in the nation who outlined this scenario, and I was lecturing and talking about this before my book was ever published, before the man in Stockton, California, ever shot those school children. And I said that this would cause the stupid middle class, the sheeple of the nation, to rise up and ask that their rights be taken away in order to get the drugs and crime off the streets. And I told Americans that they had better be very careful or they would get exactly what they ask for. And it is happening. is being brought about by these secret organizations. I would uh, advise all of you to find out the significance of September the 13th. I would also advise you that some of the people implicated in the Kennedy assassination had an address in New Orleans at 1313. Walt Disney, a famous Anglophile and a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, used to hold the 33rd or the 33 Club meetings in New Orleans Square on days that Disneyland was closed. Disneyland has an address of 1313 Anaheim Boulevard. Ah, what does all this mean? means a lot, folks, once you have studied and delved deeply into the people who are bringing these things about. 9-13, September the 13th, add 9 and 3 and you get 12, add the other 1 and you get 13. And of course, it was the 13th day of the month, 13-13. Bill Clinton has been photographed holding up one red rose in the Oval Office. That is another of the symbols. These things, ladies and gentlemen, link him directly to the ancient order of the Rose Cross, or what's known as the Rosy Cross in the Knights Templar. We know that Bill Clinton is a member of the York Rite of Freemasonry which allies him to British Israelism and it explains a lot of his actions and the actions of his Democratic Congress since he's been in office. He would have been indoctrinated into this philosophy. His stint at Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. Those of you who shake your heads and decry any link to secret societies with the New World Order and world totalitarian socialism that is coming have not done your homework. And you don't learn about these things by reading books that people have written about these societies. You must read the books written by members of these societies and read the publications and books published by these secret organizations. We have an extensive library here with some extremely rare books, some of them the only copy known to be in existence. Sidili Plaza is an outdoor temple of the sun in the shape of a pyramid with the capstone missing, the eye being the tunnel under the railroad overpass. It's actually three pyramids when you look at it from on high, surrounded by the four quarters of the Temple of the Sun, very similar to what you will find at Stonehenge. Kennedy was assassinated on Elm Street. 
The elm is significant. And if you go see the Lion King, you'll see it again. That the young lion, before he was to be sacrificed, was set up on a rock under a tree. The elm also figures conspicuously in the history of the two branches of these secret orders of the Illuminati, the French branch and the British branch. When at one point, after years of fighting each other, they met upon a plane and together they cut an elm. John F. Kennedy was assassinated in New Orleans by the Illuminati. The hierarchy of the highest degrees of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, the York Rite of Freemasonry, the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, the Rosy Cross, the Knights of Pythias, the Ancient and Military Order of the Knights of Malta, and the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. Because, ladies and gentlemen, he represented their hated enemy, Christianity, in the form of the Vatican. He's the only Catholic president that this nation has ever had. It was a blow to the church, it was a blow to the state, and it was a blow to the mob, for it destroyed the political will of the nation. It showed succeeding presidents that if they did not toe the mark, that they could be easily dispatched. Ronald Reagan, in the beginning of his first administration, deviated from what he was advised and an attempt was made upon his life. After that, he towed the mark. Nixon didn't tow the mark and he was deposed. If he had not resigned, he would have been killed. I can assure you. John F. Kennedy did something that is absolutely despicable to these secret orders who believe that the Anglo-Aryan race is superior to all other races. He was integrating America. He was prosecuting for the violation of the civil rights of the black citizens of this nation. He was setting them free from their last chains. He let them sit in the front of the bus. He forced integration of the universities and the schools. Martin Luther King was assassinated for the same reason. And Robert Kennedy also was assassinated because if he had ascended to the presidency and his election was assured, there was no doubt that he would have been elected if for no other reason than sympathy for his dead brother, he would have continued the integration of America. As it was, it was continued anyway. But the Catholic Church had no more influence in the executive branch of this country. Nor did the government ever have since the credibility that it had before because no one believed their lie that Lee Harvey Oswald acted as a lone individual. The Warren Commission was made up of an august body of Freemasons of the 32nd and 33rd degree to cover for their assassin brothers. 
But it was not the United States government that assassinated John F. Kennedy. It was the secret societies within the government who have infiltrated it at all levels. And I can assure you, as I have assured you before, they are in control. They are bringing this nation to its knees. They have created a conflict between patriots and the government. And except for a very few of us, they control both sides. You are being manipulated by both sides under control of these secret societies. That's why I have cautioned you. We must stay within the law. We must be very careful about what we do and the leaders that we follow. And once, once fighting begins, there is an unknown factor. No one can be sure who will be the victor or who will mount the throne. Shocking. Good, because I intended it to be. It should be shocking. And there's more. brought to you by Swiss America Trading. They specialize in protecting your wealth through the ownership of hard assets, the only assets throughout the history of the world that have never lost their value. You can buy the same number of loaves of bread today with one ounce of gold that you could 200 years ago or 500 years ago or 80 years ago. The same with silver. You see, it's real money. It's the only legal money and the only constitutional money. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution says that no state shall tender in payment of debt anything other than gold or silver coin, yet no state does. They deal in counterfeit money unconstitutionally in violation of that document which we hold so dear. Did you know that the United States Code spells out that one dollar is a specific measurement of gold or silver coin and nothing else? Were you aware of that? And yet we have no gold or silver coins. We deal in counterfeit money. That's why I recommend that you get some real money. Call Swiss America Trading now. 1-800-289-2646. Call them. Talk to them about your specific needs. You can tell them what you want and tell them you'll settle for nothing less. Or you can ask them what they recommend and discuss options. In any case, make sure you tell them you're a listener to the hour of the time and you will be given the red carpet treatment. 1-800-289-2646. Six. Do it now, folks. You'll be glad that you did. A great weight will come off your shoulders and you will feel much better than you have in quite some time. 1-800-289-2646.
Arkansas Democrat Gazette, September the 11th, 1994. It's the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, September the 11th, 1994, by Bob Dart. Cox News Service. Cox News Service. Report to make streets safe, rights can go. Isn't it funny how every prediction that I've made in my book and that I've made in my lectures throughout these years has come true? I quote, Americans are so afraid of crime that many are willing to give up some constitutional rights to have safer streets according to a surprising national survey. Researchers found that a majority of Americans favor giving police broader powers to stop and search suspects even without probable cause and would be willing to loosen restrictions on the use of improperly obtained evidence in criminal trials. The bottom line, we just don't want to see criminals get off on technicalities no matter what the cost, said the authors of, and I quote, The Second American Revolution, end quote, a book based on the polling. The findings dramatically illustrated the nation's concern about crime and why candidates of both parties are campaigning as hardliners on the issue as elections approach in November. The survey indicated that Senate Republicans may have erred politically in seeking to sidetrack the recently enacted crime bill. The respondents favored many elements of the federal crime legislation, building more jails, expanding the death penalty, tightening gun controls. Indeed, the survey found 84% of the respondents willing to modify or even repeal the Second Amendment right to bear arms in order to disarm criminals. Though gun control has been portrayed consistently as a divisive issue, Americans are of a clear and unified mind, the pollsters concluded. The majority of Americans support gun control. The Second American Revolution was written by James Patterson and Peter Kim, advertising executives who earlier co-authored the bestseller, The Day America Told the Truth. Both books are based on innovating opinion sampling. Folks, by innovating, they means weighted toward the answers that they wanted to obtain. Insist upon a copy of the questions, the complete poll that they administered, Find out the exact areas where it was administered, and you will discover that this poll is a fraud, a total and complete fraud, and they even admit it here, as I'm going to show you. This is propaganda, and these advertising executives are, in fact, propaganda experts. That's what advertising equates to. I continue, in the Second American Revolution, the researchers used an old-fashioned New England town meeting and modern mail and telephone random sampling to find out what was troubling America and what Americans want done about these troubles. Now, folks, there is nothing random about picking an area that you want to poll and phone numbers that you're going to call. There's nothing random whatsoever. For instance, if you were to call a city in Montana and ask questions about gun control, you would find that no one favors gun control. If you were to call the same amount of people in New York City, you would find that probably all of them were in favor of gun control. I continue, nearly 5,000 people were questioned in four polls, and the findings had margins of error ranging from plus or minus 3.1% to plus or minus 2.6%, the author said. Now, if they're talking about plus or minus one point or two points, that's one thing. When they're talking about 3.1 to 2.6 percent, ladies and gentlemen, that is a tremendous margin for error that should not be allowed in any poll. I continue, the research conducted in spring 1993 found people were frightened about crime and are ready to crack down in drastic ways. They're sick of seeing criminals out on the streets, the pollsters found. 98% of the respondents saying everyone convicted of a crime should serve the full sentence without parole or probation. Among the other findings on American attitudes about crime in the justice system, 84% supported giving police greater discretion in using force, including deadly force, in apprehending suspects. Notice they said in apprehending suspects, deadly force, Kill them before they're tried. Make sure that they're 
and guilty and can never be found innocent. 54% said police should have more powers to stop and question suspects even without probable cause to do so. 80% believed judges should have more discretion denying bail. 87% wanted to curtail or even eliminate plea bargaining in cases involving violent crimes. 58% were willing to loosen laws restricting the use of improperly obtained evidence in criminal trials. 84% would pay higher taxes to build more prisons, but only 38% said they would be willing to pay $100 more a year in taxes to increase their hometown police force by 20%. I'm going to read this one again, and I'm going to show you how this is baloney. 84% would pay higher taxes to build more prisons, but only 38% said they would be willing to pay $100 more a year in taxes to increase their hometown police force by 20%. Now over here under the column of findings, they list the truth. It says 88% believed they already pay too much in taxes. 61% said they were unwilling to pay higher taxes to address the nation's problems, and 56% favored a return to supply-side economics, which holds that lower taxes will encourage growth and generate more tax revenue. At the top, there's a paragraph, how scared are we? Americans want so badly to put criminals behind bars that they're willing to sacrifice constitutional rights if it will help make the streets safer. That's how deep the fear is. A quote from the Second American Revolution, the book. Let me read this to you again. It's almost exactly word for word what I wrote in my book five years ago and what I was telling the American people when I first stood up and began to talk out against what was coming. Listen to this. How scared are we? Americans want so badly to put criminals behind bars that they're willing to sacrifice constitutional rights if it will help make the streets safer. That's how deep the fear is, end quote. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sick and tired of being right. When are you going to help me change it around so that the predictions that I have made will not come true? and that I can come on the radio and gleefully proclaim to the world that I was wrong. When will you stand up and help me do this? Now, for those of you who are experiencing difficulty receiving this broadcast and others, when I was on WWCR's frequency 7.435, Somebody built a Catholic radio station in Birmingham, Alabama, and began to broadcast just five points off the frequency, and they bled over and drowned out our broadcast. They did not have a transmitter anywhere near 5.810. I switched to 5.810, and they built another antenna on another frequency, very close to 5.810, and now they are bleeding over and drowning out our broadcast. I'm going to give you the number of the man responsible for this, and I want every single listener to begin to call and insist that they stop, cease, and desist. Get their affairs in order or stop broadcasting. The man's name is Adele Mina. Adele Mina with Continental Electronics. Adele Mina, Continental Electronics, and his telephone number is area code 214-381-7161. That's area code 214-381-7161. Again, area code 214-381-7161. 7161. Adele Mina, Continental Electronics. Every listener must call that number, even if it's busy for three days. You must keep trying until you get through. Also call the FCC and demand that that station stop. Also demand that any jamming on this frequency stop immediately. Call your congressmen and senators and demand that they lean on the FCC until it's done. 
It's such a simple thing for them to do. They usually do that. <laughs> they usually do that. So do it, folks. For those of you who do not have the FCC numbers, these are the numbers. Call these two numbers now. If you are hearing any kind of jamming on this frequency, or if you're hearing that station bleeding over on this frequency and drowning out this broadcast, these are the two numbers to call. They are the listening stations, and they can listen right now and hear it and catch them in the act, and formal complaints can be filed and something can be done. So you must call these two numbers now, right now, 308-381-4700. That's 308-381-4721. The other number is 301-725-3474. That's 301-725-3474. Again, here are the two numbers, 308-381-4721. 4721-301-725-3474. Tomorrow during the day, you should call the FCC in Washington, D.C. and also complain. Area code 202-632-6975. That's 202-632-6975. 6975. Now, folks, whenever you hear this jamming, whenever you hear the other station bleeding over on our frequency, you must call these numbers. If you don't call these numbers, it's not going to be straightened up. Calling me and complaining about it to me will not help anything. I'm one voice, and I can call them till I'm blue in the face. If it's the same one voice, nothing will be done. If it's hundreds or thousands of separate voices, something will be done, and it will be done very quickly. So do it. Don't call me. Call them. Go back and read my book, ladies and gentlemen. Read it. And you'd better pay close attention to the things that have not come to pass yet, for they are not far off in the future at all. And remember, I don't like being right. I want to be wrong. I would like to be wrong all the time. Do it. Now. Tomorrow night, I'm going to have a great show for you. Make sure that you're here and don't miss it because it's going to be a rip banger. I'm going to be telling you an awful lot of uh, things that uh, you need to know. At least, uh, I believe you need to know. So, make sure that you are here. Make sure that you have pen and paper. Make sure that you're listening. Make sure that I have your attention. Make sure that you take advantage of the sales that we've been giving you. We Yeah.
serious question. National security is more important than individual will. All sports broadcasts will proceed as normal. No more than two people may gather anywhere without permission. Use only the drugs prescribed by your boss or supervisor. Shut up. Be happy. Obey all orders without question. The comfort you've demanded is now mandatory. Be happy. At last, everything is done for you.